So we're going to start yeah. at 40 right. and work our way up. Yep. And at number 40 this year, which is good news because he wasn't on the list last year. He didn't play until the last stages of the season. Desmond Ritter, the right. second year Cincinnati quarterback now with the Falcons. He was number five in your draft rankings right. entering the 2022 draft behind Matt Corral, Malik Willis, Kenny Pickett, and Sam Howell. Right. Ritter comes in at number 40. What got him on the right side of the list? Is it simply that he's the starter and we got to get all the starters in the top 40 somewhere? Did that help him? Well, it, it, it definitely gives you a little boost. I thought about it. I, you know, there were some guys there. I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, man, you know, this is close here. This is a guy that's inexperienced. We don't know what to expect from. And that's where these type of players like, like a Desmond Ritter or the rookies, it's hard to gauge. It's one of the hardest things about the list, honestly. But I look at him as almost like it's a rookie, rookie plus, right? Played the last four games of the year. You know, they managed him and, and you know, let him get some experience. But he had the training wheels on. So he's still a guy that's learning the game, learning how to play that way. Mike, I'll say he made improvements from the things I saw in the draft process as far as mechanics and some of the issues I had with him throwing the football. He definitely got better as far as tightening his motion up, making it a little quicker. Uh, he got better with, you know, a little bit of shoulder turn that we talk about, which was a real issue for him uh, coming out of college and it led to a lot of errant throws. And then he even improved his arm speed. Now, that was the one thing when I went back and watched film after I, you know, kind of get towards the end of making my list, I start, you know, I want to watch guys so I can write down a few notes, things that pop to me. And it's nitpicky and some of these guys. So I got to go back and watch to, to figure out who I like better. Uh, that, that did pop to me. What do you want to see from him? I got to see, you know, the the pocket presence still something to work on. The throwing has to become more high level and consistent, right? And you could tell with the way they played last year, they still don't trust him all the way throwing the ball and decisions. I mean, they like I said, it was run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, bootleg like this, run the ball, run the ball, another bootleg, right? His throwing, like I said, is improved, but it's not a high level arm and throws like you see right there. When he wants to put too gas much, on the ball, much. he can lose control of the ball. When he wants to really start to go, let me, this is a tight window, I gotta fit it in there, right, Mike? Uh, so there's that, and then there's, hey, even completions where you go, oh, man, you just throw that ball somewhat good. He's going to run for 20 yards, but the guy has to stop. So he is to be refined in that area, and that's why he's at number 40. There's some things I like, uh, but he's got some things to work on too. Who did he just beat out? Are we allowed to talk about the guys not on the list? Not yet. Oh. Not yet. We don't, I know. I know. There's, there's, and we'll get, maybe it was to get a little farther down. Just uh, I don't want to give up some of the guys that you know are these fringe guys. He just Here. beat out Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> yeah, not, not, not exactly. Um, but – I will say I give a little bit of credit or respect if a team, one of the 32, was naming him a starter. All right. Yeah. I, well, they see something to make him a starting quarterback in the NFL. And I think they're interesting, too. And not that I think this guy can be a superstar. Uh, I don't see that. But I think Atlanta's a team that's kind of going, hey, we want a guy that fits our culture, you know, can run the offense. And I think they're realizing it's not easy to get at Matt Allen or Mahomes, and they're going to build the team and have a guy they trust in to lead their team and do what they say, you know. And I look at it almost like a, a poor man's Ryan Tannehill and what he did for, you know, Tennessee and Arthur Smith. The read we've had on him from day one has been they love his intangibles. Exactly. And they're going to do their best to improve his tangibles. Exactly. That, that's, and his, in, his intangibles jump, to, jump out to you. When I met him, Pete would tell you this, Matt Casey, producer, when I got on my pod and I had to talk about the quarterback, I was like, Desmond Ritter has your starting quarterback charisma and command. Like, you know, you, you meet some of these guys, you just go, man, he's, he's got it. He knows how to talk to people. He knows how to take a joke, some criticism, you know, talk, and, and does everything the right way. And I, I think you're exactly right there. So they're believing in that, and then they believe they could fix some of the issues with his physical play, and we'll, we'll see where it goes. Um, but, yeah, excited to see what he does with this opportunity. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.